we want to have the ability to create a book as well as have the ability to update a book given that the same ID was provided. What we have here is our Next.js application and we're going to add in AWS Amplify libraries so that we can make these calls to API Gateway. But in terms of the CDK code, we have the ability to create an update on deck. That's what we're going to be accomplishing today. I'm going to head over to our API uh, gateway file here. This create cruddle API gateway that we've been working on. And then from here, I'm just going to add in one more integration. This integration is essentially going to say, um, hey, I'm going to be having a Lambda function being passed in as props. So use that on your put item request. Now this is going to be coming in from props. So I better pass this in just, and then of course it's going to be of type I function, just like that. But what I can do since this is an update and a creation phase is I can put this all within the same, same area. So we have something like this. We have our Lambda function, just make that look a little bit prettier. So when it comes to creating or updating, uh, we just call it a put. And then we have both methods being available here. So depending on what data you give me, that being the ID, if you give me an ID, I am going to update. If you don't give me an ID, then I'm going to create and I'll generate an ID for you. Now this is all assuming that we have some kind of Lambda integration being passed in. So we should probably create that, right? Over here inside of my functions directory, I'm actually going to create a new folder. And this is going to be called my, as you might have guessed, put books func. And then we'll have these same two files. We're going to have a main.ts and then a construct.ts. And I really like this convention because it makes it easy to organize and reuse this stuff as you go across different projects. So once I paste this in, you can see that we have our put function props. We have the table name still being passed in, but I do want to switch every reference to from pet. And that this is something that we've been doing in our other uh, files as well is every reference we're going to switch from pet to book, keeping the case and preserving it. And then we'll just replace all of those. Great books table. We have our props in here. We have our books table name. And this has two abilities, right? It has the ability to put an item, which means essentially create one or update an item. And these are the policies that it, the Lambda function needs to be able to access DynamoDB. So you might be wondering, what does this Lambda function look like then? And it's nothing too crazy. Similar to other files, we are going to have our existing Lambda. We're going to say, hey, if you have an ID using some knowledge called lessing here, if there is an item.id present, then go ahead and use that. Otherwise, let's go ahead and use this library to generate one. Now I'm currently not importing this library, so let's fix that real quick. I'm going to exit out of here, go into my backend stack, and then import view ID. Awesome, we have that set up. That should be enough to get this liking us again. Maybe I'm waiting for that red squiggly to go away. Oh, and it looks like it's not because it's looking for the, the typings as well. So we can easily enough install those. And then now we should be good to go. So it's going to take that, marshal it into format that DynamoDB likes and expects. And then we still have the same access control headers that we talked about in the last videos, making sure that your Lambda function is returning proper cores headers. Now, if there is an error, we are going to catch that and just say, hey, there was an internal server error with a status code of 500. But if this was created successfully, then we can go ahead and return that. I guess technically I should be saying something like, Hey, here's the data that you requested, but hopefully you all get the gist. Now we have this in place. Our table is actually already set up. So all we need to do is really just wire this together inside of our stack. And you can see it's already complaining about us saying that you have to bring in some kind of put item base function. And we call this base because it's on our slash books API route. No worries. Let's grab that real quick. And you can see once we imported this, we have our book function here. I'm just going to pass that in. Great. Looking things over just from top to bottom, what we've done so far is we have the ability to get all of our books. Now we have the ability to update or create a book. And then 
our books API is being set up right here. Everything's looking great. I'm going to deploy this. I'm going to do a quick little MPX AWS CDK deploy. You can see from the policy changes that we have here, this is going to add in a new policy. Of course, it would need to. The Lambda function has to have the ability to call DynamoDB. And then API Gateway needs the ability to proxy to the Lambda function itself to, to invoke the Lambda function. Really cool that CDK manages a bunch of these for us. We just have to specify things that happen inside of a Lambda function because it has no way of determining that. All right, and it looks like things went through just fine. What I'm going to do here is open up good old Thunder Client, similar to what we did last time. Double click on this to get the request in, and we're going to switch this over to a post. Now, I do want to make sure that this is on our slash books endpoint. Remember, we called, we got that missing auth header. So I'm going to say we don't have an ID. We're going to be creating a brand new book, something I'm reading right now. What am I reading? We have a book with a title of what is it called? The Primal Hunter, Primal Hunter. And the author is, goes by the name. It's not his actual name, I don't think, but it's Zogarth. And let's format this real quick. Great. So we get that item put successfully. I'm going to actually get rid of this body. And then over in the headers or on the route, let's go to a get request, nothing in the body, nothing in the user agent. I think if I just send this, there we go. So we get our item here with this ID and let's say, you know what, I actually am the primal hunter. That's the first book. I'm actually on the primal hunter seven. I'm killing it this year in terms of audible stuff. So I'm going to say we're going to put now this technically doesn't have to be a put. But in the body, I'm going to snag this item right here. And we're just going to paste this in. And then instead of the Primal Hunter, we're going to say Primal Hunter 7. Which is crazy that I've read that many books. If I click send, we get a status code of 200. And then if I switch this over to a get request and remove the body, click send, we get the Primal Hunter 7. Great. So we have our API going from... So at this point, we have our API with the ability to scan the database, create items, update them. I think what we're missing here is the ability to actually uh, delete an item from the database and then to get an individual item based off of its ID. Things are only getting better from here. I hope you're sticking around and checking out the later videos or going back and checking out videos you may have missed. My name is Michael Leando. Once again, I go by Focus Otter. If you have the time to unsubscribe, I'd appreciate it. But until then, I'll check you all next time. Peace.